Hello everyone and welcome to this Level 5 learning resource. Uh, just in case we haven't met before, my name is David Evans and I'm Professor in Sexualities and Genders, Health and Wellbeing. I'm really grateful uh, for your module leaders to ask me uh, to present this session to you so early on in your studies with us. And hopefully over the, over the time that you are doing your uh, degree in nursing or midwifery, you'll have lots of opportunities to study different aspects of uh, sexual health, reproductive health and HIV studies with us. So please, that's a big hint now. Um, if there are any things that you do want to cover, and especially if you think we're not already putting this into your programme, please let your programme or module leaders know so that we can do something about that, OK? We're really proud here at Greenwich in being, being able to produce so much sexual health right across your whole programme. I'm actually making this uh, brief introductory video on the 12th of April, 2021. And today is a bit of a uh, special day for me because um, I started my nursing career at 17. I did two years orthopaedic nursing first. And then when I went on to do SRN, as it used to be called, State Registered Nurse, I actually started on Monday the 12th of April, uh, 1974. So, no, no, 76. So I did orthopaedics from 74 to 76. Then 76 to 79 was my general nurse training. So it seems like a long time ago, but I can tell you now, in the three years that I was doing uh, my SRN studies, we never really had anything at all on aspects of sexual health, except for one solitary lecture. Right in the middle of our studies, or maybe towards the end, yeah, when we were old enough, sort of 21 years old, um, we had one session uh, just on sexual infections. And I'll never forget the tutor who presented this to us. She was really good fantastic person and she was presenting it and it was the old uh, projector with slides in it and she was showing us these slides and they were awful pictures of different types of sexual infections really bad extreme stuff i think she was trying to put us all off having sex uh, but she was showing us these pictures but she didn't bat an eyelid really objective in the way in which she presented this and then all of a sudden there was one slide showing a man's hands like that the back of his hands and he had stage two syphilis. So he had a big red rash all over his hands. And uh, the only thing she said was, oh my goodness, would you look at that man's dirty fingernails as if he should have cleaned them before having the photo taken uh, to be shown to us. And that's all I remember on sexual health from those student days. So it's wonderful that here at Greenwich and our satellite colleges that we are doing more and more around sexual health and well-being, especially as that's an integral part of holistic uh, care. OK, so in this resource now, you're going to see that from your overall aim for this session, your um, uh, starting off to understand the influences of sexual health and ways to improve on some of the sometimes negative things or things that can go wrong. So how can we do more about sexual health promotion and infection pre um, prevention, prevention of unplanned conceptions and all the things that can go wrong? So you're looking at it very much from the point of view of sexual health the well-being perspective, but also improving that and stopping things going wrong. And with your two outcomes for this session, first of all, is to explore some of the attitudes, beliefs and behaviours that can have an influence on sexual health and well-being. Sadly, they're not always positive attitudes, beliefs or behaviours. So we'll have the opportunity to explore that. And then also look at ways at looking at some communities, some people that do need more help with this being improved. And that could be based on their age, their cultures, ethnicities, uh, language, uh, socioeconomic status, educational status, all these different things come into play and the term that's often used for that is intersectionality. So it's the crossover the, or the crossroads of all these different things so when people are poorer, less education, less access to resources, all of those things multiply and build up and they can be um, added extras 
which mitigate the gains, uh, which mitigate against good sexual health and well-being. Okay, so we look at some of the positive stuff and also ways in which the positive stuff can be detrimentally affected by different aspects of life. And then especially from your point of view, looking at how you can do uh, your little bit to start helping people to be better around this. Okay, so work through this resource, if you would please. Uh, work through this. There are lots of little videos or little bits of text throughout, and there are references to other things. The more you want to learn, the more that's in you that you can learn. But if you just work through this particular page, and then when we do meet online or in class, however we're allowed to meet, whenever we do meet for a workshop, that'll give you the opportunity then uh, maybe to ask me some questions, share your ideas, your reflections, or concerns or worries even. Okay, or different examples of what you've come across so far. So there's an opportunity for us to build on this when we actually meet each other. Okay, I hope you enjoy all of this and I look forward to meeting you at some point. Take care and bye bye.